American Express halftime report. Watching the Knicks and the Bulls. Are you? Derrick Rose has 15. Knicks have a three-point lead over Chicago. Certainly we are. Okay. We welcome you inside Studio J here in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, Charles Barkley. Shaquille O'Neal normally sits right here, but tonight he is a special guest in uh, Kevin Garnett's Area 21. They were having a big dinner. I was being yeah, sarcastic, yeah. as a matter I've never, of fact. I've never had a massage in the same room with a... Another guy? That close. Another ugly guy? That's just sad, but anyway. With that much head slapping going on. Yeah, too much <laughs> slapping in. 54-51 uh, is the New York lead over Chicago. We talked when we came on the air about uh, the point guards on these teams and the situations they found themselves in recently. Derrick Rose uh, with the unexcused absence and the fine. And Rajon Rondo with the extended benching by Fred Hoiberg. Well... The extended benching, and it, you know, and we talked about it earlier in the pregame. I just think that Rondo uh, is a, a, a type of player that when you play with guys who are catch-and-shoot guys, he's a lot better. And the, so the team actually doesn't benefit him because you have guys who don't extend the floor, Dwayne Wade. And only McDermott, when he's in the lineup, is a guy who will take that three-point shot on a consistent basis. They don't, and Jimmy Butler is more of yeah. a two-point shooter, so he yeah. doesn't extend it. Yeah. So they don't have guys that consistently do it. So this is where he's really good at. Are you it, going back there to get a massage? Or I'm going to get a massage. I wish I could go to get a massage. But this, he still gets these type of assists, Chuck, where in transition, what, first thing Rondo do, freeze it. He comes to the middle. Every great point guard you would think comes to the middle, but they don't. But Rondo always gets that ball and he gets to the middle of the floor. In the middle of the floor, he has freeze it again. He has so many options now because now he's the most lethal man on the floor with the basketball. So what he does is he draws the attention and gets layups for guys who typically can't get their own shot. Again, he gets the ball where? In the middle of the floor. Freeze it again. Once he's in the middle, he says, I can get anybody a shot. It doesn't matter. So he comes off hard to pick and roll. Derrick Rose shows. Now I have a shot. Freeze it again. That's typically a jump shot and the play will be over. But not with the Bulls. They have guys who catch your drive and then pass and shoot. They won't just catch and shoot. They're going to catch and drive. Very few guys on. And then... What he does is now he sucked you in. Freeze it again. He sucked you in with all of those passes. He gets on the baseline and he says, no, this one's for me. And now I'm going to become a scorer. And that's how he scored in Boston. But his ability to get to the middle of the floor is, is a little bit ineffective with the Bulls because they don't have guys who stretch the floor out on a three-point line. So he doesn't get to make those type of assists that he typically did and create havoc for your a defensive opponent. He averages seven assists a game. That's number 10 in the league. He has seven in the first half of this one. The Bulls down by three. Derrick Rose, 15 points in the first half. Chuckster. Yeah, Derrick Rose played well. He knew he had to play well tonight. This is his first home game since he went AWOL. So you knew he was going to come out. But this crowd would have got on him. If he got off to a rocket start, the crowd would have been on him all night long. But I still get back to what we talked about again, and I, I think it's a travesty and a disgrace that the Knicks did not suspend him. Ernie, listen, Derrick Rose, everybody knows he's a great kid, but you just can't miss work for no reason and don't call your employer. I mean, that just that just can't happen. And it sets a bad it just sets a bad example for the rest of the guys on the team. Like like you can do what you want to. Uh, and and, and I, I, one of the reasons Nick's a bad organization, they don't, they're not holding these guys accountable. You just can't miss work. I mean, I, and I just can't believe they didn't suspend him. He has played well in the two games since that episode. 17 for 24 from the floor, 71%.